The crowd roars as Steve Nash re-enters the game with 3.57 left. They've been calling for him. They'll get a chance to see him perhaps one more time as a son. Steve Nash is one of the greatest point guards to ever play the game of basketball. Steve Nash played 18 seasons in the NBA, and throughout his career he's racked up a lot of accolades. He's a member of the 50-40-90 club. He's won back-to-back -back MVPs, and in 2018 he got inducted into the Hall of Fame. But let's go back to where it all started. You would think that an exceptional player like Steve Nash would have started playing basketball at an early age, but that is not the case. Steve Nash did not start playing basketball until around 12 or 13 years old. His first sport was actually soccer as his dad was a professional soccer player and his younger brother also played soccer as well, so basketball did not come along until later. Steve Nash attended St. Michael's University where he played both soccer and basketball, but ultimately he decided to go the basketball route and in his senior season he averaged 21.3 points, 11.2 assists, and 9 rebounds per game and he led his team to the championship title and was named the player of the year. Now with having a solid senior season under his belt like that, you would think that Nash was heavily recruited by universities around the world, but he was not. He was not offered a single scholarship from any college until the then Santa Clara head coach Dick Davey came to one of his games to watch him play. Dick Davey said it didn't take a Nobel Prize winner to figure out that this guy is pretty good, but on the flip side he also said that Steve Nash was the worst defensive player he had ever seen in his life. Nevertheless, he saw the potential that Steve Nash had so he gave him the scholarship. Now fast forward to his freshman season at Santa Clara, Steve Nash only averaged 8 points and 2 assists in 24 minutes played per game. Now that's not horrible, but it's definitely not eye catching either. But Steve Nash was a hard worker, so throughout his college career he drastically increased his points per game every single year from 8.1 points to 14.6 points in the sophomore season, and then from 14.6 points to 20.9 points in his junior season. So he really matured his game and progressed well, and in his senior season, he averaged 17 points and 6 assists per game. After his senior season, he declared for the NBA draft. Now, Steve Nash was part of arguably the greatest draft class of all time. 1996 NBA draft consisted of players like Allen Iverson, Kobe Bryant, Stephon Marbury, Marcus Camby, Ray Allen, and many more. Steve Nash was drafted 15th overall by the Phoenix Suns, and this is where his 18-year career began in the NBA. Some players enter the league and make a big impact right away, but that was not the case for Steve Nash. He was entering a team that already had pretty good depth at the guard position. He played behind Kevin Johnson, Sam Cassell, and Jason Kidd, and Jason Kidd was already the second pick in the 1994 draft two years prior to that. So the struggle for playing time came early, and he already had his work cut out for him. In Steve Nash's rookie season, he only managed 10 minutes per game. That's not a lot of time on a court to show people what you can really do as a basketball player. And two years later, during the 1998 NBA Draft, Steve Nash was actually traded from the Phoenix Suns to the Dallas Mavericks in exchange for some assets and the first round draft pick. Spinning, twirling, scoring, Steve Nash. He is some player. He is some basketball player. Now it's finally being on a team where he can actually get minutes and show what he's capable of. In his second season with the Mavericks, Steve Nash averaged 15.6 points and 7.3 assists per game. Steve Nash was accompanied by young Dirk Nowinski and Michael Finley, along with Juwan Howard. And with this core, the team clinched their first playoff berth in over a decade. And although they lost in the Western Conference Finals to the great San Antonio Spurs team, people were starting to notice how good Steve Nash really was. In fact, in the following season, Nash earned a spot on the All-NBA third team, and he was also selected to play in the NBA All-Star game. In the 2002-2003 season, Nash led his team all the way to the Western Conference Finals, but unfortunately, he ran into the Big Three in San Antonio, and he did not have enough firepower to overcome that team. In the following season, Nash and the Mavericks met the Sacramento Kings in the playoffs, where they lost four games to one, and although Nash had another solid season, it was clear that that team could not compete at a championship level. After that season, Nash became a free agent, and although he attempted to sign with the Dallas Mavericks again, there was a problem. Mark Cuban was already paying Antoine Walker, Michael Finley, Dirk Nowinski, and Antoine Jameson nearly $50 million in combined salaries. So he did not want to take the risk in signing 30-year-old Steve Nash to a long-term deal. Now this is where the Phoenix Suns come in. Nash wanted a long-term deal with the team, so the Phoenix Suns offered him a 6-year, $63 million contract. And he even went back to Mark Cuban to see if Mark Cuban would match the contract, but he would not. 
So in result, Steve Nash signed with the Phoenix Suns for the following seasons. Nash found a lot of success in Phoenix where he stayed with the team from 2004 all the way through 2012. Nash was joining a team that already had young stars like Sean Marion, Joe Johnson, and Amari Stoudemire ready to roll. Head coach Mike D'Antoni favored an up-tempo style of basketball where he likes his player to run up and down at a fast pace. And with Nash joining the team, he had the perfect point guard to lead the way in transition and on fast breaks. When Steve Nash joined the team, the Phoenix Suns had a win-loss record of 29-53. Next season, they turned that completely around where they recorded a record of 62-20 and, and were the highest scoring team in the league. The team meshed well together because they had a lot of young athletic players to run the floor in transition, and the pick and roll chemistry between Amari Stoudemire and Steve Nash was really unmatched. Steve Nash would go on to win the MVP award that year, becoming the first Canadian player to ever win the MVP. Nash and the Suns would also go on to advance to the Western Conference Finals, where they would lose to the arch rival San Antonio Spurs, who then went on to win the NBA championship. In the next season, although Amari Stoudemire suffered a bad knee injury and Joe Johnson and Quentin Richardson were traded away, Steve Nash still went on to lead the team to a 54-28 record along with winning the MVP for the second straight year. That's not bad for a kid who was only offered one scholarship in high school. And although the Phoenix Suns were eliminated by the San Antonio Spurs three times in four years, Nash really made his mark as one of the best point guards to ever play in Phoenix. Now in a decline of his career, Steve Nash will go on to play with the Los Angeles Lakers from 2012 to 2015, where he would then retire and play his last game of basketball. Steve Nash is currently a head coach for the Brooklyn Nets, where he has stars like Kevin Durant, James Harden, and Kyrie Irving. In his first season as a head coach, Steve Nash coached the Nets to a record of 48-24, where he also made the second round of the playoffs. Steve Nash had an amazing career as a player, and it'll be interesting to see how well he does as a coach for years to come, but only time will tell.